Hey there, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music. Welcome. In this video, it's a bit of a return to form. I'm going to be deconstructing a cue uh, that I wrote for a forthcoming docu-series, going through the libraries that I used, the way in which I mix things, sequence things, the way in which I thought about arrangement, beginning, middle, end, rising action, falling action, all that stuff. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the bell, you get notified when new videos come out. Like, leave a comment, I read them all. I just wanna say that this documentary series is not out yet, so um, depending on people's reaction to this video. Uh, I have more cues to write and it's ongoing, so I might do more videos like this for the rest of the cues. Um, so we'll just see. It's a bit of a, you know, um, we took a break from, from composing and things like that, and now we're kind of back with the uh, anatomy of a cue series, so to speak. So i um, interested to see what you guys think and, and um, if you want to check out more. So uh, let's hop into it. Okay, so that is the cue. Um, this is the session, and let's go through, first of all, what we just heard. I mean, this is supposed to be a kind of plotting uh, murder mystery type theme. That's what the directors wanted. The docu-series is about the um, sex trade, perhaps uh, you know, covering all sides of it, but maybe <laughs> spending a bit more time in, in its kind of underbelly than the positive uh, side of it. So it was really supposed to be a kind of, you know, um, yeah, missing and murdered kind of vibe. And um, that's what I did. That's what we have here. So um, let's first start off with the piano, um, which I solo it here. I mean, it's pretty simple. This is pretty kind of standard, you know, Netflix kind of creepy melody stuff here. We have the chords as well that kind of uh, help support it. And if we go to automation, you can see that I'm doing some volume automation here and then further down. joined here at the end. So I might do some more mixing work here, but I mean, this is in a, a pretty good shape, a shape that's, I think, strong enough to show to, um, to, to the directors, which I have, and you know, they're happy with. So um, doing some high passing, 12 dB per octave slope here, uh, nothing too uh, crazy. Um, no high passing done on the second one. Uh, don't know why, but that's just how it is. Let's see what piano I have here. Uh, using Hammersmith by Sonic Couture. I love this piano. I, I, I adore this piano. Pyramid Song, this is obviously Radiohead uh, inspired. And on the second track, let me just get this chain thing here going. On the second track for the chords, we have a different preset. I don't know why. Probably should have been the same one. Uh, Filter Pillow, which is a very Brian Eno-y kind of um, vibe. And that's, yeah, that's what the pianos sound like. And that's, they're really kind of carrying um, the main melody here. I could have used a different instrument, but I just, I liked um, having a piano kind of lead the way. And then we have this brushed spiccato. What's going on over here? Let's, let's listen to it. So I, I literally just copied the MIDI from the main piano over here and then had another instrument kind of step in and do some work. And these are panned uh, to the right here. Let's see. Um, oh, also on the pianos, we have things going to a bus, bus one. 
which has uh, NeoVerb, which is a reverb that lets you combine a couple different algorithms in the same um, plugin. So we have a mix of uh, hall and probably a dash of plate, and the reflections aren't really factoring in. All the way, dry, wet, makes sense. And um, we just have a bunch of different instruments going to the same uh, reverb. So same thing with brush spiccato, it's going as well to NeoVerb. So let's check out what we have here on this track. Um, okay, so Albion Solstice. I, uh, I'm i so impressed with this library. I have to admit, I'm a little jaded with the amount of string libraries coming up from, frankly, everyone. Um, and so with Albion Solstice, when I heard the demos, I thought, wow, this is really a, uh, this is a cool new development and evolution in string libraries. LCT, I think it was LCT by Spitfire, um, was my last favorite string library they did just because the the articulations I got to go find it here to make sure yeah London Contemporary Orchestra strings they were so gonzo and and, and weird and I thought okay uh, with Solstice this is also gonzo and weird and they just sound really creepy and awesome like we're hanging out in the woods you know and I thought that um, that's what this score was kind of all about it was all about the um, the kind of nefarious side. The side that you know, the side of the, the this X tray that we don't see, and the kind of people affected by it, and 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 so that's the vibe just fit perfectly. Really simple. We're not changing the world here with these. Main piano. It's important that in the third act here we get a little bit more movement. So that's why we have um, another instrument kind of um, padding this out. So this is obviously, we're in the high frequency territory. We'll get more to the lows. I've, I've organized this um, this uh, mix here in terms of what I added when I added it. So this is what I started with, and then I if we go lower, I had kind of, this is what came later. Um, so for those of you new to Logic, if you want to open up the automation uh, lanes, just press A, okay, and that's how you do it. Um, so next we have these bended strings. This also comes from uh, Solstice, I believe. And these just sound phenomenal. These are in the effects. Um, what frustrates me about contact is you'll open something here and then I don't know how to like how to go back and index it so you can see how I got there. We're just kind of left with this library and at least I know what it is, but you know what I mean? We'll have like something open over here usually when you're when you're figuring it out but then when you close it and open it back up again you can't kind of retrace your steps and see which folder from the individual library you got this from but you can see here it's from the effects class in solstice but just listen to how gorgeous these strings are spitfire really crushed it um, these guys come in and, and, and just kind of uh, it just it bends beautifully and it really adds something to this part of of the track <laughs> So let's listen to that in the context of everything happening here so far. They're a little loud. I want them to be loud um, because they sound incredible. And this is what I want to draw everyone's attention to. Uh, they just sound awesome. They're major thirds. So, oops, keyboard is under the desk, but... So you can have them kind of come in or they can all um, you know hit their hit their third at the same time if you hit them all at the same time anyway they just sound incredible I'm very grateful for this library it played a huge role in this queue let's keep going here so the piano pulse this is what opens things when you when you watch a kind of Netflix thing sometimes you've, you've got a cold open uh, with uh, I keep saying Netflix but when you watch a TV show sometimes there's a cold open we go right to the credit sequence uh, the intro sequence, the title sequence, I should say. Um, but sometimes you have something uh, like a stinger that kind of launches you into the um, title sequence after, you know, so you've got like, uh, I, I might be messing this up. Sometimes you open with the title sequence and sometimes you have a, a cold open where you have someone uh, in a scene or whatever. And then we eventually transition into the title sequence. And that's what this piano pulse was meant to do. It was meant to kind of like, 
this could show up in the middle of a scene, right? And uh, you hear the pulse and you know that the episode is starting and then we're going to go into the title sequence. So that's what this was all about. So we could have no other instruments and, you know, we kind of know that like, oh, it's about to begin soon with this, uh, with this pulse. And this is pretty low end heavy. So we can't have this thing go the entire duration of the cue because then it would get, um, you know, it would kind of drown everything out. So I, I have it faded out by the time we get really to the kind of the, the end of the cue here, it just goes down. It's just very subby and boomy, which is fine. Um, but I don't, you know, I'm, I'm cutting out some lows as you can see here with the, the channel EQ. Um, and what is it? It is, uh, ash light. Got it. So I love the ash light and the, uh, I can't remember the name of the Arcus. They, they all sound, the vocal one is a little, uh, I'm not really using that one, but ash light and, and, um, and I think Stray Light is the other one. Um, no, not not Arcus. I think I said Arcus. It's Ashlight, and I think Stray Light is the other one. It's part of this granular synth series from from Native. They just sound incredible. So that's kind of what's what's starting us off. Uh, and then you can hear this kind of. I might as well just go to it now. We get this. Um, is it this impact here? This impact is what kind of starts the title sequence in my mind. This is also really subby and, and boomy and, and loud and bassy, so we have to be careful with this. I'll, I'll talk more about that once we get to it, but that's, you know, that's kind of how we start. Just a reminder, starts like this. Right? Next we have these, uh, I guess, glissandi up strings. What do these sound like? What's going on here? beautiful i think these are also solstice yeah there we go effects and motors uh up an octave so we just get that lovely bend that kind of like like a glide on the synthesizer up to the next set of strings and it just sounds awesome um i've got these a little quiet right now let's go back And they just perk everything up and, and let us know that we're going into a new section of, uh, of the track. That's all that's going on. I don't have them sending to any reverb. Um, I, I don't know why, just that's the choice that I made. Channel EQ, gentle, you know, cutting off a lot of information below 250 hertz. Um, let's see here. We have another set of strings. I think uh, these might be a bit more kind of mid-rangey as opposed to super high frequency. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah, I'd say I'm right. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't do these on the same track. I just didn't. And these are going to some reverb. Um, let's see what these are. I mean, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. Um, FX Gliss Up. They just sound so good. Let's hear them together. to the drones um drones are super important in all the cues that i do they just help fill out um stuff and make everything feel really professional and kind of huge um and that's what we like so let's hear what they sound like
not much going on there, but these are from Ash Light. I've got um, a high pass here. We're just high passing everywhere we can to protect uh, from mud. And this is, I don't know, abuse of confidence. These, <laughs> these, these uh, patch names are hilarious, but I don't know, it just sounded good to me. And we're not really modulating much. The, there's so much modulation within the, the sample playback that I don't have to do anything, which is why I love Ash Light. I just kind of play some chords and keep moving and that's what we've done here so more strings yeah you can see my organization isn't isn't that great um trim long strings let's see what these sound like now you always have to be careful with these because the gliss up strings i think they both occupy similar territory in the frequencies One of my issues with, with, with composing is I'll, you know, I'll get so kind of excited to just pack on more and more and more without thinking about, okay, can I hear everything that I've just done? Or is it all kind of sounding like a big kind of, you know, lasagna? Um, I could do some extra work here. Like I said, this cue isn't done. It's, it, it's in a good place, but it's not done. I could pan these guys. Um, but, uh, I guess I just listened back and I didn't really have an issue with how these two were getting along. So, uh, but just something to think about when you guys are working on your own arrangements. Um, now we get to the impact, which sounds like this. And that on its own, I mean, to do something like this, like 10 years ago would have been like, I, I don't know, not impossible, but would have taken you a lot of sample libraries. Let's open up and see what we have here. Yeah, so this is um, Symphonic Destruction from Heaviosity. Uh, just, I mean, it sounds absolutely incredible. down on the keys so you know i i'm not one to go in and make all my own patches and stuff i use what's there and i bury it in a mix and i keep moving and this just sounds phenomenal so great job uh heaviosity and we do have some automation going on here let's just kind of see what's moving um it's not always easy if it's in logic and i'm automating just the volume within the digital audio workstation it's easy but let's see what i have i can you can see these these lines these columns here i have something going on so let me just play this back and see what's moving around. Yes, yeah, so this is macro here. So I guess they affect drive, filter, and space. Anyway, um, just everything Heaviosity does for people like me who don't want to spend a huge chunk of time uh, designing and manipulating everything, it, they do great work. So now we have some very simple choir stuff, high, mid, and low. I've separated them. Um, let's see why I did that. Where are, these, where are these coming from? Okay, so these are also from Solstice. Solstice. And uh, we have a high one, which I think ends, excuse me, ends the track. We have a low one and a choir low. Yeah, here we go. So let's hear them all kind of come together. There's the low. Here's the mid. So 
So they're just making a chord, and you can see that I'm I'm uh, playing with the dynamics here. That's where these columns, and you can see this little the the mod wheel or whatever there, uh, moving up and down. So the reason for this is you know, this documentary series is focused predominantly on women in the sex trade, and I just thought it might be nice to have something that symbolizes you know them or you know something kind of in there. And if you listen to the cue, the the fem the the women's voice here, this is the last thing that we uh, hear. And so that was the idea behind that was just to have something that represents the women in in the main queue. Um, and I should, you know, I'm not like an expert or anything, but if you, whatever you're working on, if you can symbolize something that is um, uh, represented in the story with music, I mean, some people will have different, you know, instruments represent the characters or something like that. You know, like Powerpuff Girls, they always had like their own little themes and everything. Um, and instruments to represent the characters. If you can do that with a score, just go for it. I, I don't. It just adds something. Um, it just adds another dimension to what you're working on, and 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 uh, you know, it's, it's certainly appreciated by the people that are working really hard on these stories. So let's let's hear that kind of that final um, voice here. And by the way, I'm not. I, I don't use Chase MIDI. It just slows everything down. So we're not going to hear all the MIDI represented, but you can at least hear it here. So you hear her at the end. We're getting some some stuff from some of the other sample libraries just based on where I put the transport. So that's why you're not hearing it as clearly. But anyway, so she kind of, you know, does her thing at the very end. And that's what I wanted people to be left with was the sound of a, a female voice. Okay, so let's go over here to this clock beat, which uh, has a compressor on it. You'll see, guys, I don't have a ton of, I'm, you know, I'm not like saturating and sending to this, any of that, and then crazy EQ moves like these libraries sound so great on their own I try to do some processing within the individual library itself and take advantage of the tools in there but they just sound so darn good that I'm not doing a whole bunch of a whole bunch of processing afterwards when I was starting I would do a lot of that you know just like try to sound design as I composed but now I just work with what I have it's more efficient and I think it you know I, I just think it leads to a, a result that I'm happier with so anyway we, we do have a compressor here it's a logic one just to get these guys to a decent level. Um, and they are getting pretty drenched in, in Neoverb here, but let me go to contact to see what we have. Yeah, so this is from Solstice, uh, cool little percussion kit, snake kit. Um, and it's just it's just a cool kind of found sound percussive thing. Have a listen. I don't like, I don't know what that is uh, specifically instrument wise, I have no idea, but it just sounds kind of cool. So I wanted it in there. I didn't want like a timpani. I didn't want any kind of like, you know, I wanted something kind of weird that sounds like, you know, someone sampled it, you know, in their garage or, or whatever. And then you add some reverb and compress it. And um, let's see if I can go back here and just get a little bit of context for it. Uh, again, not all instruments are going to be represented, but here we go. That's what that sounds like. Um, next, we have uh, some rhythmic elements in this um, in this cue here. So mellow trill sequis from orchestral tools. For those familiar with the um, the micro, like the time series from 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 these guys, I feel like sequis or sequis. Um, it's kind of like a repackaged. I'm trying to find it here. Yeah, micro time, and there's macro time as well somewhere else in this. Uh, this thing, they're kind of like repackaged micro time things, um, and they sound really cool. And you can open them up and get more layers as you move the mod wheel. Um, I just I, this needed some kind of rhythmic propulsive element, and and sequis. I'm going to keep pronouncing it differently every time. Um, really added that for me. Let's see if it starts here. There's no MIDI here, is there? Yeah, we got to go over here.
that's it. It just adds something kind of cool. And it also has a little bit of DNA with the clock beat. There's just something about it that, you know, they kind of sound like they're maybe from the same family, so they work. So that's what's going on there. Um, and don't worry, I'll cover the master, like the stereo out too, before we get to the end here. So next we have Arcus, another grain synth, which just sounds great getting drenched in, in, in reverb here. Let's uh, have a listen. Oh, this isn't, sorry, this isn't the grain synth. This is the other uh, orchestral tools kind of sequencer thing. Let's have a listen to what's happening here. playing with the mod wheel here. I had to do some volume automation because this guy can kind of take over and distract from what else is happening in the mix. So that's why, you know, I had to play a little bit here with, uh, with, with its volume so that it didn't kind of, you know, strangle everything else. Um, if anyone out there that makes sample libraries is watching, uh, I could really use some help with this next one. <laughs> um, by help, I just mean I kept trying to find these cello kind of very particular cello stabs and I had to create my own just because I could not find them anywhere. I made triplets out of a library, and this is what I mean by what I don't like about contact is I can't I can't go back and see where I got this library from. It's from some kind of orchestral tools library. I can't remember which one. Um, yeah, I have no idea. It's collection 2.1, I know this is OT, but I have no idea where I got it from. So um, I basically m messed with these. Um, this is a kind of like, um, a sequencer or something within uh, Orchestral Tool, one of their plugins, uh, one of their libraries. And I just kind of messed with it so that I could get these triplets. It's kind of inelegant, so it's buried in the mix. I've got it panned a little left, which is weird for a bass instrument, but whatever. Um, and I've got uh, Little Labs VOG. This is just a, a subharmonic generator, so it's going to add a little bit of um, oomph. Uh, to whatever you put it on and I've got why do I have neutron three okay I have a I have this here for some transient shaping here just to kind of help this guy poke out a little bit but when I when I mean I need some help like I would love to find some kind of natural cello triplet thing that that is just a pure triplet that I can you know press one key and then let go I had to really time this so that it worked out like you'll see what I mean so when I go like like I just want one, two, three. You know, so I had to make sure that, I, let me see if I can do it right now. I had to make my own triplets here. So that's kind of, and there's four in there if you listen closely, but they're so close together that they sound um, like they could be three, but I just want three, just bottle it up. Uh, if that makes any sense. There, now I'm getting it, but unless you're care unless you're not you know if you're not careful you'll mess this up and you'll get like more kind of strikes than you need so anyway this is what it sounds like so i, I managed to just hit the hit the midi key and then i just copied you know option dragged and, and made three out of them so they sound like this they they kind of get your attention um in the mix <laughs> So you might be asking yourself, why do we have all this other volume automation here? So I, I might as well just delete this. Um, this is because I had more uh, more of these triplet stabs throughout the uh, the arrangement, but I, it just didn't sound good just over and over and over. And also it starts to sound very like, hey, this is just a loop driven cue. So I got rid of them um, and uh, I should, you know, I just deleted the automation. Let me just make sure I save that. Um, so yeah, so they're, they're just there to kind of, kind of get your attention and, and make the make things interesting here 
and um, we went over what's going on. They have some reverb on them, extra reverb. Never sure how I feel about orchestral tools and reverb. Sometimes they have a lot of reverb on, on them, and sometimes they don't have any. And anyway, so I think I just added some just to give them a little bit more um, space. Reverb can help to kind of uh, dull things a little bit, but of course I perked it back up with, with the transient shaper. So what do I know? What am I doing? All right, let's go to this next cello, which plays a pretty large role in this track. Um, and so I had to automate its volume just to make sure that it was getting in your face and getting your attention at the right times and not, again, with low end, you got to be careful because a lot can kind of add up and then you, you got pea soup, lasagna, whatever food metaphor you want to go with. So this is what it sounds like soloed. It just it it fades away at this point. So let's go to what it actually is. There's some reverb on it here. So this is from Stradivari, Stradivari cello, um, Cremona Quartet from I think this is yeah E instruments. So I could have used the Solstice cello. I just don't like it compared to all the other stuff. So I just went to this cello. Um, I also could have used the Veer Harmonic cello, but like it's not contact and getting it open and all that stuff is a bit of a mess. So I went with this guy. Sounds pretty good. Virtuoso, it means you can just kind of like play with it and try to make, you know, your fingers play like a cellist would play and it'll kind of come out sounding kind of similar. Um, I, I, I'm not doing too much here. I just want those bends, right? I want that glide. Uh, let's have a listen to it in the in the track here. Next up, we have this eerie synth. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Cliff Martinez, and one thing that he does really well is he incorporates just little synthy moments within uh, his cues. Um, and I, I, I want to try. I wanted to try and do that just so it's we're not so orchestral, capital O orchestral with this cue, and have something kind of digital poke through. Um, and I really like what I was able to come up with here in Massive from Native X is Massive X uh, from Native X Native Instruments. Sonar ping was the um, um, patch that I found here. Um, and I'm using, I guess I turned the channel EQ off, but I, I do have this sending to a tape delay. Delay, this is just a, a factory one here. Quarter dotted, quarter note dotted. And then I have obviously some neoverb happening there, but let's listen to this on its own. Here it comes. Um, and it's kind of going down in pitch, which I do with my uh, controller. I also have this arpeggiator here, which is just giving me, if I you know, play a chord. So I just wanted something different and unique. And um, it just comes in, I think, at the right time to help make things feel really kind of eerie and weird. to the right um, and uh, yeah let's go to the, uh, the the master bus here so we have a a limiter simple limiter I'm using all stock plugins just because there's a lot of contact on here and my, my computer is getting a little long on the tooth so I didn't want to burden it with a third party plugin um, just pushing up the gain here so that I can send something to the crew and, and you know the director and all that and so it's nice and loud um, and then I just have a, a peak level meter um, just to you know, keep an eye on overages and so on. So let's do this track one more uh, from the top and then we'll wrap things up. So you've seen everything, um, all my choices, all my plugins, all my tools. 
Let's do one more time and then say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. And again, please subscribe, uh, hit the bell icon, get notified, uh, thumbs up, uh, I think thumbs down, I'll see them, but you guys won't. Um, leave a comment if there's anything I didn't cover enough, like uh, why I used a certain sample library over another, or um, just any kind of decisions I made, or you wanna get in my head or pick my brain, please let me know. And uh, we can always make a part two. We can always go a little bit deeper if this was too surface level. Um, anyway, thanks and take care.